Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. The Alabama women's basketball team served up breakfast this morning for fans and some media at practice. The Crimson Tide will play an exhibition game on Monday night against Faulkner at Foster Auditorium before opening the regular season next Friday at home against Alabama A&M as part of a men's and women's doubleheader at Coleman Coliseum. Head coach Christy Curry likes her team's talent level, even though the roster is dominated by freshmen and sophomores. She thinks they're going to be a really fun team to watch play. And with that, we say good evening, everybody, and welcome into Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock, alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm WVUA 23 Sports Director Gary Harris. Harris tonight, Pepsi Max, because you want to live life to the max, right? That's right, you do. No calorie, all that great Pepsi flavor. Thirsty. And I'll tell you something. Ronnie, before we get to Alabama LSU specifically, both these teams, as the poll just came out, the first college football playoff poll for 2015, and both the Tide and the Tigers, let the SEC conspiracy theorist Get cranked up. I'm sure they already are on, th on Twitter. Clemson, Dabo Swinney, Alabama connection there. He played and coached here. Is number one. LSU is two. Ohio State is three. Alabama is four. Florida all the way down at ten. But that's the top four. If there were a playoff that began tomorrow, Alabama would play Clemson. LSU would play Ohio State. Now, Rodney, before I know Bama fans are thrilled, but before everybody freaks out, the reality of it, Alabama and LSU are going to play on Saturday night, and uh, one is going to beat the other. So next week that poll won't be the same. But still, if you're a Bama fan, you have to be thrilled. I didn't think the Tide would be in the top four. I thought fifth at best, probably sixth. But, hey, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's, it, it's, it really doesn't matter. I mean, when you look at the, the poll – from last year, the first poll and the teams that ended up in it, I think only one of the first four uh, in that initial poll ended up in the in, in the playoffs. So again, I you know obviously it excites Alabama fans, and you understand why. But at the same time, it really doesn't mean anything. I think Alabama clearly has the same thing they had to do before the poll came out, and that's they have to keep winning. And and probably probably when all said and done, they need Ole Miss to lose. Yeah, it's still fun though I know for Alabama yeah, fans is. to have a loss and come in in front of yeah. all these unbeaten teams like TCU and Baylor from the the Big Twelve and many others. It's kind of an in your face type deal for the SEC again. So I'd, I'd sure love to hear Danny Connell about right now. And of course one guarantee yeah, I'm sure he's having a big time. One guarantee is that if Alabama beats LSU they'll remain in that top four next sure. week and of course the same for LSU although the Tigers theoretically could still be in the hunt as it would be their first loss if they lose. All right Rodney let's move on now and we're going to get to our, our preview in just a moment but first it's time for this week's coach speak presented every week by Med Center. Nick Saban and Les Miles held their weekly press conferences on Monday and here's some of what the two head coaches had to say about the upcoming game. Well, they've, they've made a lot of explosive plays in the passing game, uh, and I think they're taking advantage of what people are trying to do to stop their run, whether it's play eight-man fronts and have to play, you know, middle of the field closed coverage where you got single coverage outside, and um, they've been able to take advantage of that and make some big plays. And uh, I think the key to the drill is is you got to be able to stop the run, uh, but you can't give them big plays. If they make big plays, that's when they score lots of points and. Uh, I think when you got a good defensive and special teams group like they have, you know, it's hard to make that up. So, um, you know, everybody's got to be very disciplined in doing their job in playing a team like this. Uh, the the uh, opponent is, is uh, uh, just like the, the teams we've played in the past, great defense, talented offense, um, very capable special teams. Um, I, I think it's... I think it's going to be just just that. I think it's going to be you know a a, a quality game with you know the best of both teams being featured and um, you know some special players on both sides and uh, kind of see how it goes. You know the, the, where the where the best are. So. He's so fun to listen to, Les Miles. Only the only Les Miles. Yeah, he, he says it in his own special way. All right, this is a big challenge for Alabama, no doubt about it. The Bayou Bengals are unbeaten, and it's in Tuscaloosa, which the way Alabama's played at home this year, there might be some Crimson Tide fans saying, I wish it was in Baton Rouge. I'm being a little bit facetious, but still, home has not been as friendly as the road has been to Alabama, but still, that's where the game's going to be played on Saturday night. So, uh, 
Both teams are going to have to block out all that stuff, all the noise. The weather could be a factor. But let's start our breakdown, Rodney. It's two really fine football teams going to battle it out, as it's been the case since Saban got to Alabama. Yeah, by far Alabama's most physical opponent of the year, I think. Even though Arkansas is a really physical team too, Gary. But I think when you look at LSU, I mean, obviously they bring a ton of talent here to Tuscaloosa for this particular game. And, you know, they're, they're loaded when you talk about on offense. They have an outstanding offensive line. You look at Leonard Fournette, the best running back in the country, averages 193 yards a game. They average 309 yards a game rushing, which leads the SEC. So they're, they're outstanding running the football. And, and Gary, his backup, Darius Geis, only averages 9.3 yards a carry. He's an outstanding player as well. So when they rest him, Darius Geis is outstanding. That's a good point, Ryan. They're certainly not a one-trick pony. And uh, let's, you see Brandon Harris there. They haven't asked him to do a lot, but he's playing with confidence. They've got great wide receivers. So, you know what? Fournette's the best football player in the country, in my opinion. But they can hurt you with the passing game, especially over the top. Well, they've, Alabama's, first of all, you've got to slow down Fournette somehow. And if they can slow him down and, and not allow Brandon Harris to set up the play action and those types of things, and he has the ability to scramble as well. So, he can uh, make things happen with his feet, but they've really got to slow down Fournette somehow, some way, and if they can do that, then they're in pretty good shape. And for Alabama on offense, the Tide has uh, been solid this year, not spectacular. LSU, you know they're big, fast, strong, athletic, but they're not a real deep defensive team, particularly up front. They're young, and they only play about six defensive linemen rotating in and out where Alabama plays 10 or 12. So maybe the offensive line could wear them down on defense, right? Well, they, they certainly could when you look at them defensively, Gary. They only give up 93 yards a game rushing, so they've been really good against the run. They've given up 222 a game passing. But in every game this year, LSU's given up 20 or more points except the first game against Mississippi State, and that game they gave up 19 so I, I think they are susceptible a little bit to the pass now they do have a really good pass rush so Alabama's offensive line which is you know kind of been up and down they certainly are going to have to protect Coker when they throw the football and you know they're going to have to open some holes in the running game for Derrick Henry yeah and uh, keep in mind too that Alabama has won four in a row in this series so LSU really going to have the added incentive to try to get off this night. We'll have our predictions on the game coming up later in the show. And, and real quick, Rod, before we go to the break, you mentioned Derrick Henry. I think he's going to have a little bit of an ax to grind, too. Not that uh, he hasn't had a great year and has gotten recognition, but clearly he's considered the second best running back in this game. And I imagine he'll, you know, no, he knows I agree that. with you. I think I, I've said that. I, I think he's going to play with a chip on his shoulder. I think this is a game that sets up well for, for Derrick Henry. All right, as I said, our – Picks on the game still to come. Also still to come on Tider Insider Television, Alabama, as we mentioned, has won the last four meetings between the Tide and the Tigers. Find out what the players are saying about the annual showdown in the SEC West. And also coming up later on in the show, your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You can call us at 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Or email us at TITV at WVUA23.com. Or you can tweet at us using the hashtag TITV. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. The one, the only, Tider Insider TV will return right after this break. Three Bama players are semifinalists for National Football Awards. Derrick Henry is up for the Maxwell Award, which recognizes the Collegiate Player of the Year. Henry has had a big year so far with 1,044 rushing yards and 14 touchdowns. Reggie Ragland and Nashawn Robinson are in the running for the Benaric Award, which honors the Defensive Player of the Year. Ragland leads the tide on defense, 71 tackles, five tackles for loss, two sacks, and four forced fumbles. Nashawn has been big on defense as well with 26 tackles and a fumble recovery. A.J. McCarron won the Maxwell back in 2013, but no Alabama player has ever won the Benaric award maybe that will change this year well you know some rivalries are just for bragging rights and that's important but then there are some like Alabama and LSU with much more at stake and that's the case again this season here's TITV's Jen Chapman with more you know we've had some great games with LSU through the years this has turned out to be a, a great rivalry um, and I think it's a great rivalry because of the quality of the, the programs. This week's game between the seventh ranked Crimson Tide and fourth ranked Tigers expected to be another classic in the storied rivalry. Alabama has won the last four meetings in the series. LSU is currently undefeated. The big game can only get to be the big game. The big game is only so big, right? I mean, it's it's uh, uh, you're, you're playing for you know, all the things that you wanted to play for at the beginning of the year, you're, you're playing for uh, the lead in the West. As Tide linebacker Reggie Ragland said, 
It's just another game. It's just hyped up a little bit more. But it's that height the players hope to avoid to stay focused on themselves. Heck, I don't uh, read much or see, you know, I don't watch ESPN too much either. So to me, I don't, I don't really hear it or see it much. So I'm just trying to get, get ready for this game like any other game. The team who's more disciplined is going to play better, it's going to win. So uh, that's, that's what we're going to try to do. You know, we can't play out of scheme, can't let the environment get to us, just kind of play our game. Um, and every man do his job in his box and we'll be fine. The biggest task at hand, stopping current Heisman favorite Leonard Fournette, the number one back in the SEC, going up against the top run defense in the league. It's no surprise to me that the guy has developed into, you know, one of the premier players in the country and arguably the best running back in the country. So can't have nothing but admiration and respect for the guy in terms of what he's accomplished, what he's done, and the kind of player that he is. He's the, probably the best player in college football. So anytime you're going through a guy like that, you know, it's more excitement to it. But, but you still got to but you still got to do your job. End of the day, you got to wrap him up just like everybody else out there. Both teams coming off a bye week, ready for a physical showdown. Jen Chapman for Tider Insider. Thank you, Jen. And Roddy, we know Coach Saban uh, preaches, don't worry about the scoreboard, don't worry about the opponent, you know, prepare yourself to play. But players are, are people, and they're 19, 22 years old. They're extra hype for this game. That's just the reality. Well, it's a huge game. I mean, certainly you can't help but be, you know, they try to play it down today. Derrick Henry talked about it's just another game and you want to kind of keep your focus and worry about what you have to do in terms of your job. And I think they do, Alabama does do a good they job do. of that because Nick Saban does a, a, you know, he preaches that. That's what he really wants them to do. And so I think from that standpoint, I think Alabama probably kind of controls their emotions a little better than most. They have to be careful to channel that emotion in the right direction. Coach Saban thought they were too hyped for Ole Miss, and we saw how that turned out. But uh, this is not just another game. Well, coming up next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the information posted there on your screen. Give us a call at 205-348-9882. I know you want to talk about this game, man. It's, it's Alabama LSU. It, it's big. Prime time on Saturday night. We'll be right back with more Tider Insider TV right after this timeout. Reggie Ragland's up for another prestigious award as well. It's his second straight season to be nominated for the Butkus Award presented to the nation's best linebacker. Alabama's had a great history with that award. C.J. Mosley in 2013, Orlando McClain in 2008, and Derek Thomas in 1988. The late Derek Thomas have all won that award. But Rodney, it's time to head to the phone lines, and they are lined up for us tonight, so let's get right to it. First up, our buddy Joseph right here in Tuscaloosa. What up, partner? Hey, everything going good, man. Shoot. I'll tell you what, man, do you think will we be able to slow Leonard Fournette down? I'll tell you what, I think, I don't know, you think we're going to beat LSU? All right, Justin, let's start with Leonard Fournette, right? I mean, as I said, and, and I love Derrick Henry. Nick Chubb was great running back, you know, before he got hurt and still will be again. But Leonard Fournette's a different yeah. different kind of animal, in my opinion. Yeah. He's just, uh, he's he's physical, he's fast, he can make you miss, he can run over you. Uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a chore. How do you see Alabama trying well, to defend him? And, and I think another thing, too, that their offensive line is really good. I mean, they do an outstanding job of coaching their offensive linemen. And, you know, certainly they're a big part of the success that Leonard Fournette's had, Joseph. But when I look at it, I, you know, I, when you say slow him down, I, I don't know what really slowing him down is. But I think if Alabama can keep him between 125 and maybe 135 yards, Gary, which is, you know, about 60 yards shy of his, his, his average. So if they could do that, I, I think that would be a fantastic yeah, job. Yeah, because he's going to get his. I, I think one big key, Rod, is, you know, make him get it six, four, five, six yeah, yards. Not Nobody give up the big run. Right, right, right. Because, I think that's the key. And hit him a lot. Yeah. And Alabama's defense is capable of doing that. He's a special player, though. All right, let's go to Northport and talk to Scott. Hey, Scott, how are you? Fine. How are you, Rodney and Gary? Very well, my friend. What's up tonight? Uh, well, uh, Scarborough, the running back, gets to play in this game. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. The, the weekly question on Bo Scarborough. You know, Rodney, I'm going to defer to you. I, I, he's going to play when he plays. I, you know, it wouldn't shock me if we see him, but I've been saying that for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, and again, I, I think when you look at what Nick Saban generally does with players, Gary, it's especially when they come in the middle part of the season, really, because he missed the first four games. He doesn't have a lot of experience. Alabama has played a really tough stretch of games here. I think sometimes coaches are reluctant to put a guy in that doesn't have maybe much experience in, in those types of situations. So, you know, my guess is if he played, it would I, – I just don't see much. And he is still, you know, coming off a major knee Yeah, and it well. doesn't mean that he's not doing well. Yeah. It, it, and, and, again, he may have a little role. We'll see. They had a bye week. Perhaps they've gotten him ready to uh, where they feel comfortable to put him in. And, you know, he's, he's an extremely talented guy. All right, let's stay here in Tuscaloosa and talk with J.K. 
What's going on, J.K.? Hey, good evening, fellas. How y'all doing? Very well. Hey, y'all looking ever dapper again tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with 140 recruits being in, in town and us already having several verbal commitments, you guys, what do you see as a priority for recruiting from here on in the rest of this season? Okay, J.K. and Rodney, there are going to be, as he said, a, a ton of guys here. We're not going to get into specific players, but, no. but what do you think is left for Alabama as far as well, trying to round out this yeah, class? Yeah, I think there's some, you know, they've already filled a lot of their needs, obviously. I think when you look at it, though, they really need some defensive linemen. They're probably going to lose a few in this this year, some of them are seniors, possibly have Ashawn Robinson and Jonathan Allen, who could go pro. I think they need a couple of linebackers at least, uh, maybe another DB or two. And I think when you look at the offensive side, certainly they've got to have a wide receiver or a few wide receivers, maybe a couple of more wide receivers. I think, Gary, they always could be looking for a big block and tight end. They need that. They've got a couple of tight ends committed, but those two guys are really not that big physical type. And I think another running back, even though they have a really good one committed, I think they could use another one. Thanks for the phone calls, but if you didn't get through, we're not done. Coming up, more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. And we uh, certainly are hyped up about this game, if you can't tell. You are, too. I mean, this is what it's all about. Alabama versus LSU every November. It's got conference and national championship implications, and it does again this year. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back, everybody, to Tider Insider TV presented by Buffalo Rock. Let's get right back to the phone lines, Rodney. Let's talk to uh, Gary over in Leeds. Hey, Gary, how are you? Good afternoon, Gary and Rodney. Um, my question is about Bradley Sylvie, a defensive back. Yes, sir. Is he still with the team? And I know uh, if he is, uh, I know he struggled a little last year, but he looked like he improved a whole lot at the end of the season last year. Gary, he did improve a lot last year. He's a senior cornerback from out in Louisiana. Really played a big role last year. He is still on the team, but um, honestly, just some other guys moved ahead of yeah, him. Yeah, he's year. got great speed, no doubt about that. And he did improve dramatically near the end of the year. He, he made a couple of really big plays in that Auburn game, if you remember. And uh, you know, again, I, I think that, uh, like Gary said, he just kind of fell behind a couple of other guys. Marlon Humphrey being one of those guys that. Um, at that left corner spot. But it's nice to know you got a veteran guy like that. If he's needed, he could uh, step and in. And he's up and playing play. on special teams. Yeah, and he's on special way. teams a lot. All right, let's go over to Birmingham and talk to Marty. Hey, Marty, what's going on, man? Hey, I'm just checking on Eddie Jackson. Will he be full speed this week? Well, I don't know if he'll be full speed, Marty, but he's going to play, uh, definitely. He practiced last week. I mean, I don't know how many people are actually at full speed, but he's, he's going to go, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, he's been practicing this week, Marty, and again, I, whether or not he's actually 100%, I mean, who knows, but certainly I think he's going to play. All right, we got another phone call, and I missed two. Uh, who is it again, Katarina? All right, Dwight. Let's go to Dwight. Hey, Dwight, how are you? Welcome into the program. Doing fine, guys. I just wonder what y'all think about uh, Kenyon Drake. He's going to be able to play this week. Yeah, uh, he's he's going to go. I, I tell you, I hope Kenyon. Uh, I'd love to see him have a breakout game, Rodney. He's uh, he is a little banged up. Uh, has not played the way I thought he would play this year, but uh, down the stretch, he could still be a very valuable player for Alabama. He could, and and you certainly would like to see him play well in this game. But again, there may be a wet track and. Uh, you know, against you remember in the Georgia game, there was some rain issues, and I think that maybe that's really not the best track for a guy like Kenyon Drake, but uh, we'll see. He's got the talent. He's capable of having a breakout game anytime. Email question, Rodney, and this is from Keelan and Coleman. Offensive line needs to be better this weekend to give Coker time. Keelan, I agree. I, they, they need to play better, and I think they will. By week. Cam Robinson's been deemed Dominic Jackson's status at right tackle. We're not sure about it, but uh, I do think they need to play better than they have, and they do need to give Coker yeah. time. I, I, I certainly think they're going to play better, and I do think that, Gary, you know, there have been some issues and some of that you mentioned with Cam Robinson's injuries, but, you know, I, I think that uh, the offensive line have one of its better games. All right. We're going to take a, uh, another break. Thanks for those phone calls and emails. We enjoyed it as always. Well, coming up, you know what time it is, our picks. I tell you, I think Rodney, Rodney's uh, 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 trending toward LSU. No, come we'll on. see right after this. You know, the locker room is home to the original elephant wear, just like the dress shirts that Rodney and I have on tonight. 
And they're located on University Boulevard in Tuscaloosa on the famous strip and have been in Tuscaloosa since 1964. But it's not just the original elephant wear. They've got all the major brands for men. They've got a women's line as well. You can visit them in person. Alex and Rush and the staff are so friendly. They'll make sure it's fitted perfectly. Or you can shop online as well at locker-room.biz. The Locker Room, a Tuscaloosa tradition since 1964. Well, Rodney, it's picks time. And you know what? I always like to start with you so I can see what you pick in case I want to change mine yeah. at the last second. <laughs> no, I don't ever do that. What you got? Well, you know, Gary, when you look at this game, of course, the, the big storyline is can Alabama contain Leonard Fournette? And I, I think they certainly can slow him down. And if they do, I think obviously that increases Alabama's odds of winning the game greatly. But I tell you, Alabama's offense cannot put the tied defenses back to the wall. They can, the, when you look at overall negative plays, Alabama's 123 out of 128 teams. They simply can't do that and put the defense in bad situations if they don't turn the ball over, Gary, and if they prevent the negative plays. I think Alabama's in pretty good shape, 21-17. Well, Rod, I'm just ready to see Alabama play a great game at home. They have not done it this year. They got by against Arkansas. They got by against Tennessee. They lost Ole Miss. They were outstanding on the road against Wisconsin, Georgia, and Texas A&M. It's time for the Tide to rise up inside Bryant-Denny Stadium. And that doesn't mean I'm going to pick Alabama to blow it out LSU. I think it's a fourth quarter game. I'm right along with you, Rodney. My score very, very similar. I like Alabama 24 to 20. As you said, LSU gives up over 20 points a game. I think that the Tide um, gets a score in the fourth quarter late to win it and keeps themselves in the top four of that bowl playoff poll that is out. So we'll find out on Saturday that, night. That would be five in a row, and you know – how upset those people down yep. there are going to be. They're going to start getting upset with less miles. But we'll find out on Saturday night for sure. It should be a heck of a game. Also, a reminder, if you missed any of this show, you can catch a replay tonight at 1030 following the news at 10. Also, it'll be available online at WVUA23.com. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching Tider Insider Television. Have a great evening, everyone.